Now the first one that is the least square problem. The reason why we call this is the least square. It is mainly because we are going to minimize the error between these two terms in the square way. So this is the least square problem. Take a look at this one. The function, that is the cost function, feedback function, or objective function, it is a scalar function. It means that when you fit in x, the decision variable, the x that is in n dimensional space, it means that we have x1, x2, up to xn. Yeah? And that is the number of elements of x. Depends on the application. And uh, so what we are going to do is just to minimize this function of s of fx by adjusting x so that this is the minimization problem and then the interpretation of this equal sign it means that we do not mean that minimum of x that is this bit we mean that fx that is defined in the l2 norm of this difference so we are going to minimize the right hand side as well but fx that is the right hand side so Take a look at this uh, square. Yeah, this. Uh, sorry, I mean this two in the subscript. It means that we are going to do the L two norm of a x minus b. Take a look at this one. If we have a x with n element, when we two do the L two norm, it means that it is equivalent to the right hand side. Each element of x we do the square sum of all the element elements square take the square root that is the definition of the l2 norm so apply to this one that means we are going to do the square of each element in this matrix and then to do the square right here and the upper square right here that is actually the square so if we are going to do square of the l2 norm of x that means we just simply get rid of the square root so in that case the square of the l2 norm of x can be written as x transpose of x so this is x transpose this is x multiply them together and then so we come up with the short form that is the l2 norm of x to the power 2 yeah so now x that is a column vector in this form a that is m by n matrix for example a that could be if m that is 3 n that is 2 so we will have 1 2 3 4 5 6 that is a 3 by 2 matrix in that case x that would be we only have two elements x1 x2 and then b that is just the same we own we are going to um, have three elements yeah so we have seven eight nine yeah so when you pack these variables into this formula you will just find out that their dimension they are compatible yeah how do we find out a and b it depends on the application that is the way how you formulate the optimization problem we are going to look at that in the tutorial section and when we expand this one so that means we are going to do a x minus b transpose a x minus b because we are going to use this concept right here expand it it will give you this equation right here we would like to minimize f x that means we are going to turn to we are going to turn to the calculus d f d x equals zero and then if we are able to find out what value of x that can set d f d x to zero and then that would be the stationary point yeah okay now when we do d f d x because now x that is a vector of many variables so we are not going to just simply do df dx because this is a vector we are going to do the gradient the gradient the definition is that we are going to do puzzle f puzzle x1 puzzle f puzzle x2 up to puzzle f puzzle xn so when we do this one that is it will give you a vector like this and then to set it to zero that is the same 
concept as right here. The stationary points happens at the gradient that is zero. Yeah. Now, now a and b they are constant matrices or vector according to the application. The only unknown that is x. So if we are going to arrange the term. Put everything on the right hand side we come up with this x so when you know the value of a and b and then if this inverse exists and then we can find out the solution of x immediately yeah so this is the um the solution to this minimization problem this solution minimized the difference right here in some cases it will not give you the difference that is zero it just minimized the error yeah okay and now we are going to consider a special case that means if we are going to have the matrix a we have many column yeah so we have um, column a1 column a2 up to column a um, uh, a n so if all this column a they are orthogonal to each out to each other for example a1 dot a2 uh, this dot that is the dot product and then uh, equal zero for all combinations a1 dot a3 find out all the combinations of these columns they all equal to zero and then we can just simply calculate the solution in this way rather than using the pseudo inverse solution like this in the previous slide yeah so we are going to use this one b that is a constant a1 that is the first column of a and then this is the dot product just to remind that when we talk about the dot product for example a1 that is one and two so a1 dot a a1 dot a1 it means that this is 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 yeah 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 yeah so that that is the dot product so in this case this is the value of x1 this is the value of x2 up to xn so that means um, the reason why we apply this special case that is when a that is very large and then so we can just simply do, do it find the solution column by column but for this one when a that is a very large matrix and then so we have to do inwards the computational demand is quite high in that case okay so again this only applies when a that is being the column of a being orthogonal to each other yeah Otherwise, we cannot apply this method. Uh, this is the least square problem.